I guess the two parts of this question, um, you know, number one, with what you're talking about before, with the visualization, you know, enjoying the process, if you didn't have that mindset and you had more of the mindset of, you know, your only thing was I'm not, I, I just have to win a gold medal. Otherwise, um, you know, you're looking for that to seek validation. Um, do you think you would have gotten to where you got to? And, and can you also tell me, explain, you know, you're saying when you hit your head in 88, I just so interested to hear the psychology of, you know, what you went through in that process to come, come through the other end. I, I mean, it's pretty, pretty fascinating. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot to unload right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nick, that's a lot. That's Is a that too lot much? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, one thing that I I always had performance goals, not result goals, and yeah. the reason for that was if I looked at somebody else as my competition, then I would be limiting what I would be able to do, because if they if we were in a competition and they missed a dive more than likely I would miss the next dive. Right, right, right. But because I'm just looking at them, because I'm just looking to beat them. Yeah. So why would I limit what I potentially could do? And that's the reason why I had performance goals, hmm. you, know, to, you know, because then you have to, you know, to break world records, you have to be, have the courage to leave everybody behind, you know, because yeah. if you're breaking world records, nobody's, not, nobody's with you, you know, nobody, yeah. you, you don't, there's not a whole lot of company there. No. You know, so you have to have the courage to, you know, to go be beyond and, and as beyond as you can be. Yeah. Um, now, unpacking the, the whole, <laughs> hitting my head on the springboard, you know, when, when I took off the board on my reverse two and a half pike, I knew I was going to be close. I stood it up a little straight, but when you do that and do that dive, you usually are afraid you're going to hit your hands or, or your arms. So when I came out, I made sure I was wide so I wouldn't hit the board. And I started coming out of my dive and it was like, oh, okay. I didn't hit the board. And then all of a sudden I heard this big hollow thud and I wow. go crashing in the water and I'm thinking, what the hell was that? And I realized, oh, holy shit, it was my, it was my head. And the first, oh, emotion, the, the first emotion that I felt was I was embarrassed because here I am at the Olympics and I'm supposed to be a, be a pretty good diver. And I go and <laughs> hit my head on the board at the Olympic game. <laughs> And so I was embarrassed. I was thinking, okay, how do I get out of the pool without anybody seeing me? You know, and there's cameras and the audience, you know, it's like, there was no way. And so then, um, so then I climbed out of the pool and, you know, and I was just, you know, because I was also HIV positive and, you know, nobody knew about my HIV status except my coach. And so I was like covering my head and, you know, and, and, and making the decision, you know, to, continue my my coach came to me ron o'brien he's you know he said you know you can walk away you have all of these records you don't have to get back up on the board i'm going to support you a hundred percent i'm behind you um whatever you decide and kind of knee-jerk reaction i said you know what we've worked too long and hard to get here and i don't want to give up without a fight and so i learned that uh after hitting my head i i I dropped to fifth, so I still would have made finals, but I, you know, I needed to complete my last two dives in order mm. to you know, stay in, you know, in, in the finals. And so, um, what, uh, what Ron did ap after my, my head was sewn up and I said, come on, let's go for a walk. And what he did is he reminded me, cause I didn't have time to get over that. Yeah. In order to get over something, you need to process it. And yeah, I didn't have time to process it because I only had like 22, 23 minutes before I had to get back on the board. Wow. And so um, first he reminded me that it was a total fluke that that ever happened and that to, you know, just to dis disregard it like it never yeah. happened, you know, and he said, just do do the rest of your dives like you've been doing in training. Not, yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. Just do what you've been doing in training. And, uh, and then, and then um, he said, you know, hockey players, they get 30 stitches on, you know, 
with cuts or whatever, and they get back on the ice. You got five stitches in your head. That's nothing. You know? <laughs> and so we were like laughing, you know, yeah. and, and that's the key too. I mean, because that taps, you know, smiling, laughter, that taps into, you know, your body chemistry of, you know, endorphins and, and all to be able to, you know, assimilate and to, you know, push through, you know, a lot of the fears, you know, that we might have, you know, rather than the cortisol and, you know, anxiety and all that. So, um, yeah, so he got me laughing and, um, and that was key. And I remember, um, they announced I was hit on a reverse two and a half pike. And then I had my reverse one and a half with three and a half twists and reverse three and a half as my final two dives. And so they announced the dive. I set the fulcrum and they announced my dive and I could hear an audible gasp from the audience because I was moving in the same direction. And so I took a deep breath and I patted my chest like my heart was pounding outside my chest because of yeah. I felt like it was. And I took a deep breath in and I smiled and the people who saw that in the audience started laughing because it's like, oh my God, he's scared too. We're scared for him, you know? And, and so when I heard that laughter, I started, I, I started laughing, you know, to myself and thinking, oh my God, these people are like in my corner. They want to see me succeed. And, um, and I knew I was at the Olympic games and I couldn't hold back. So, you know, I did that next dive. And as it turns, turns out, I mean, that was, I think the highest scoring dive for the Olympics. Wow. You know? So, um, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was Incredible. pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy, but yeah, but I didn't have time to get over it. I, I know a lot of people said, well, how did you get over hitting your head? I said, I didn't have time to process it. I mean, I didn't even have time to process it during that games. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Is it too, way too many other things going on and in a short time, time frame, you've just got to find that way to get yourself back up there. But yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. It's incredible. And I mean, I think that it's just such an amazing story and so many things people can learn um, from hearing that because it's, it's again, reinforcing the, the messages that you were saying before about, you know, not taking things too seriously going and just focusing on yourself and not worrying about what other people are doing and, and just going back to that process. You know, if, if you follow the process again, it gets you back to, to where you need to be. But uh yeah, I mean, it's a pretty, I don't think many people would be able to sort of handle that kind of pressure and <laughs> do what you did. So it's, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and the thing is, I mean, it, that took practice. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it was, it was all of those events leading up to that, you know, whether it was, yeah. you know, 